I left Zimbabwe when I was 17 to go and continue my studies abroad. The sadness I felt as I left family and friends was strangely accompanied by a sense of relief. I'd finally made it out and onto greener pastures. Leaving home was one of the hardest things I've had to do because even now as I approach my graduation, I'm not sure when I will next be back home. I right, say so my name is Chido Munyati. I'm 34 years old um, and I work for the World Economic Forum in Geneva, Switzerland. My name is Mudia Munyati and I'm currently a senior at Lindenwood University and I'm currently pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in Sport Management. Okay, so Tabli Chateri. I grew up in Zimbabwe. I went to um, Cape Town to where my sister was for school and I did my final year of high school there before coming to America to play tennis. My name is Devin Hensel. Um, I'm currently studying in the United States of America. I came here in the fall of 2015 to start a uh, university. Um, I came on a soccer scholarship. That's the reason I came to the United States and I'm currently in the process of getting my MBA. My case was in no way special. From very early on in high school, my peers and I knew that most of us would be looking for opportunities to study outside of Zimbabwe. We were aiming to end up at prestigious colleges and universities in countries like South Africa, Australia, China, the UK, and the USA. Most of us expected to land somewhere in South Africa as Zimbabweans make the largest migrant population in South Africa, with estimates being near the 3 million range. It was never in my mind where when I first left that I was going to come here and not want to go back. It was always, I'm going to go back every summer. If I can go back for Christmas, that would be awesome. But it was just every summer, and then when I was done with my four-year degree, I'd be back home. Within the next five to ten years, I'd like to move back home. But with the current economic and political climate, I don't see it being the case. It was never in my plan to go back to Zim, which breaks my heart for sure. But... I was either gonna stay here, but coming here, I understood it's actually not that easy to stay here. I can't just find a job and be like, well, I can be based here. It's not that simple in America. So, I mean, there's all other options I've thought about like Canada, but my last, last plan was just to move to South Africa because I believe there are more opportunities for young people in South Africa. When I left Zimbabwe, um, I don't think I really had an idea of whether or when I would return back to Zimbabwe. Um, we left at a time just before um, the precipitation of the land reform program. Um, and this program um, is what led to the collapse of Zimbabwe's economy. The desire to secure long-term financial security is an important one for my generation, largely because of what we experienced growing up. My family often reminds me that I missed out on the good old days of Zimbabwe. A Zimbabwe which only exists in something of a dream in comparison to the Zimbabwe I lived in. Before 2000, Zimbabwe was known as the breadbasket among the SADC countries due to high amounts of wheat, tobacco, and corn being exported. However, on the 14th of November 1997, a day that has come to be known as Black Friday, the Zimbabwean dollar crashed to 72% that of the US dollar. The Herald, Zimbabwe's most popular newspaper, attributes the Black Friday crash to poor economic management, highlighted by the poorly executed war veteran compensation and the subsequent cuts in aid from institutions such as the World Bank and IMF. Zimbabwe's economy failed to recover from the crash on Black Friday, and the Zimbabwean dollar continued to plummet and finally crashed in 2008 with inflation rates at world record levels for the time. The economic conditions have minimally recovered since, and as a result, many Zimbabweans, old and young alike, have looked outside of Zimbabwe for prosperity, resulting in high levels of brain drain. Brain drain refers to the migration of highly skilled and educated workers from their home countries to countries where there are more economic opportunities. Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge in Zimbabwe is there is no um, recognizable uh, formal system um, of employment. Um, the one that is, what does exist is very marginal. 
Um, so there are very few opportunities um, for people with qualifications to really optimize their skills and their education. I think the most frustrating thing about the economic climate within Zimbabwe is that as a young person, there's not much we can do to change the circumstances or help the circumstances besides moving out of the country. I just knew from the beginning that for career-wise, moving to Zim after being in America wouldn't help, especially that I don't know if my degree would be beneficial in Zimbabwe. I don't feel like I could go back and get a normal job and then live on that salary by myself the way I am doing it right now. So since I've been here, I've become a lot more independent. I have a bunch of on-campus jobs that help me pay for my rent and stuff. And I basically sustain my own um, living expenses here by myself. Um, I would still be safe if I go back. Um, my parents would obviously still look after me, which is kind of something I don't want to do. Um, personally, since I've been living by myself and I just have that independence now. Not many people are earning much in US dollars, so they kind of struggle to gain sustenance in terms of having savings and planning for the future because they're kind of living day to day. Zimbabwe's medical professionals provide clear examples of how the flight of skilled workers is crippling Zimbabwe. The WHO estimates that Zimbabwe has 1.6 physicians and 7.2 nurses to every 10,000 people, revealing a clear deficiency of medical professionals. When one considers that there are an estimated 18,000 Zimbabwean nurses working abroad, it becomes clear the impact that brain drain can have on a developing country. In researching Zimbabwe's brain drain issue, I read through multiple articles discussing the phenomenon from a largely economic standpoint, which paints a bleak image of Zimbabwe. While there is a good amount of data to support the trends of emigration that I was a part of, there was next to no information about the most important element of it all, the individual people emigrating. I've always told myself that I would love to return home and that I don't want to be a foreigner for the rest of my life. By the time I got to my junior year of high school, I started to feel a sense of disconnection um, and a longing of wanting to go back home. When I first left, I didn't know what I was going to do when I got back, but I just knew I wanted to go back and, and start something. Um, I remember I had a friend from Ethiopia and we would have conversations about what it would mean to go back home, to contribute, um, to rebuild our countries. I feel like my generation, when we get old, there's a lot of smart people that might be in positions to help change the country when the time comes. At the end of the day, Zimbabweans are talented. I think if we can get more leaders that are focused on the future of Zimbabwe instead of focused on the here and now and how much can I make and if we focused on youth and invest in our youth and use that as a driving force for our future, I think that would be one huge aspect that would change Zimbabwe's fortunes. When I was younger, particularly when I started university, my idea of contributing to Zimbabwe was contributing directly to Zimbabwe from Zimbabwe. I think when you live abroad, I think you realize that you can have an impact on your country um, in a broader sense. It doesn't have to specifically be impacting Zimbabwe. It can be impacting the region um, or the cont continent global, um, broadly. I do know that for something to be fully successful in Zimbabwe, you do have to fully immerse yourself in it and fully be on board with it. And it's not going to be easy and there are going to be a lot of stumbling blocks. I do think being here, I can still help, but I would, there's sometimes and I'm like, I need to be on the ground and like fight because we're fighting for the next generation that may be our kids. In a situation that seems truly bleak on paper, there is a spark of hope that is carried by Zimbabweans both home and abroad. A hope for a better future for our country. Hope that we will be part of the change and will one day live to see a better Zimbabwe. To my fellow Zimbabweans, I leave with this. Let us all work to make Zimbabwe the breadbasket we once were. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a foreigner forever. <laughs>